Valves 101 Valve basics, types and standards The content of this presentation are intended for educational purposes only. And do not replace independent professional judgment. They do not constitute advice and should not be relied upon in making or refraining from making any decision. Statement of fact and opinions expressed are those of the speaker alone and are not the opinion or position of his employers, past or present, nor those of the professional bodies and committees in which he participates. Chapter 2 Materials and Trims In this chapter, we will discuss the common material and trims of valves. We will focus on metal seated valves and soft seated ball valves. The internal elements of a valve are collectively referred to as a valve's trim. The trim typically includes a disc, seat, stem, and sleeves needed to guide the fluid. Difference between cast and forged. Forging and casting are two very different manufacturing processes used to manipulate the shape of metal. In the casting process, metal is heated until molten. Then it is poured into a mold or vessel to create a desired shape. In the forging process, material is pressed or hammered into a certain shape while still maintaining a solid state. Casting versus forged Why use castings? The main benefit of casting is to create components that are too large, complex, or otherwise unsuitable for the forging. Casting is used when the part is too large to forge or the part is complicated. Casting is also used when the part requires custom alloys to be added. Why use forging? For better strength, more consistency, a tighter grain structure, and longer lifetime. The valve can be forged or cast. For smaller size valves, it can also be produced from bar stock. The table shows the cross-reference between cast and forged materials in ASTM. Example, carbon steel in forged A105 and in cast A216WC B. Stainless steel 316L in forged A182F316L and in cast A351CF3M. Temperature limits for body materials. Carbon steel grade WCB body is limited to a maximum temperature of 415 degrees C. Long exposure above the temperature limit may convert the carbon phase to graphite. The temperature limits of the various materials can be found in the applicable ANSI codes. The table shows a summary of the temperature limits for the various body materials. The chart shows the most common piping components that are used. As example, if the pipe is carbon steel SA-106B, the butt weld fittings are SA-234WPB, flanges are A-105N, valves will be A-105 for forged and A-216WCB for cast, fasteners will be A-193B7 and A-1942H for non-sour service, and A-193B7M and A-1942HM for sour service. The removable and replaceable valve internal parts that come in contact with the flow medium are collectively termed as valve trim. These parts include valve seats, disc, glands, spacers, guides, bushings, and internal springs. The valve body, bonnet, packing, etc. that also come in contact with the flow medium are not considered valve trim. Valve trim parts may be constructed of assorted materials because of the different properties needed to withstand different forces and conditions. Bushings and packing glands do not experience the same forces and conditions as do the valve disc and seats. Flow medium properties, chemical composition, pressure, temperature, flow rate, velocity, viscosity, erosion and corrosion considerations and the relative cost are some of the important considerations in selecting suitable trim materials. Trim materials may or may not be the same material as the valve body or bonnet. API has standardized trim materials by assigning a unique number to each set of trim materials. The most common API trim number is API trim number 8. Nominal trim is 410 with hard faced. The trim code is F6HFS. Stem and other trim parts is 410, 13CR, 200-275 Brunel hardness. Disc or wedge surfaces is 410, 13CR, 250HBN minimum, Brunel hardness. Seat surface 410 plus Stellite grade 6 with 350 HBN Brunel hardness minimum.
API trim number does not cover ball valves. Soft seated trunnion and floating ball valves have a hybrid trim configuration. While the stem and ball usually feature standard metallic materials, the soft seats come in a variety of elastomers. Metal seated ball valve trim, as the name describes, have metallic ball and seat closure members. These trim components can be manufactured in dozens of materials. In addition to solid components, metal seated ball valve closure components are often infused with extremely tough metallic coatings such as chrome carbide or tungsten carbide. These coatings are usually very hard and highly corrosion resistant. Non-metallic trim materials. Thermoplastics. The most common non-metallic trim material is polytetrafluoroethylene or PTFE. Pure PTFE is very soft and pliable and forms a great zero leakage seal when combined with a smooth metallic mating surface. However, pure PTFE has proven to be too soft for many valve applications. Various reinforced PTFE materials have been developed that include additional strengthening materials such as glass, carbon or graphite. In addition to PTFEs, other tougher, specialty soft seating materials such as nylon, peak, Devlon, are used to beef up the elastomer to metallic sealing system. An important consideration for all these non-metallic materials is their limited upper temperature sealing. The general range for these materials is between 204 degrees Celsius and 232 degrees Celsius depending upon the compound. Elastomeric seals. O-rings are also popular choices. O-rings are also used in stem and seat rings in trunnion ball valves. These soft seats offer zero leakage performance unless the soft O-ring is torn or otherwise damaged. Some of the more popular O-rings include Nitrile, Buna and Viton, although there are dozens of specialty compounds from which valve designers choose. Graphite is also used for high temperature sealing applications or valves required to meet fire safe requirements. The materials that make up valves. Materials used in the manufacture of valves and how they perform in different applications is a topic of huge interest to everyone who works with valves. Some of the common questions asked can be found as follows. Duplex and super duplex stainless steels have been used extensively for valve components since the 1980s. Why are these alloys so widely used and how have they improved? Are they covered in various piping codes? Because of their unique combination of corrosion resistance and strength, duplex stainless steels continue to be widely used for valves in both pressure containing and trim components. The oil and gas industry embraced duplex stainless steels during the 1980s, largely because of improved resistance to chloride stress cracking in temperatures above 60 degrees Celsius, where austenitic stainless steels are susceptible. Duplex stainless steels are widely used for ball, butterfly, check, gate and globe valves in a variety of applications and industries such as desalination, chemical processing, and pulp and paper. The initial grade, whether for bar, forging or casting, was UNSS 31803, which has a nominal chemistry of 22% chromium, 3% molybdenum, and 5% nickel. ASTM A182 grade F51 forgings and ASTM A995 grade 4A castings have been frequently specified and used for valve body and bonnet materials. An improved duplex stainless steel often used in petrochemical and seawater services is alloy 2507 or UNSS 32750 cast ASTM A995 grade CE3MN or 5A, which is often referred to as a super duplex. It has a nominal chemistry of 25% chromium, 4% molybdenum and 7% nickel. In addition to higher strength, which makes this material an excellent choice for stems, it has very high resistance to pitting and crevice corrosion. A similar version for castings is UNSS 32760, ASTM A995 grade CD3MWCUN, which is used for pressure containing components such as valve bodies and bonnets and is included in the American Society of Mechanical Engineers, ASME, B16.34. The selection of the appropriate duplex or super duplex stainless steel requires evaluation of a variety of factors including the end user's needs for corrosion resistance, the valve manufacturer's required mechanical properties, and ASME standard and code compliance requirements. Pitting and crevice corrosion resistance of super duplex stainless steels are almost as good as Hastelloy C276 and have been used as a lower cost alternative in some services. 
One restriction in the use of duplex stainless steels in valves is high temperature above 300 degrees Celsius and have the potential for embrittlement because of the chromium content. What is super austenitic stainless steel, and where and how is it being used in valves? Common super austenitic stainless steels used in the valve industry are UNSS 31254, 254SMO, and AL6XN, and UNSS 20910, S21800, Nitronic 50 60. They are predominantly used to obtain both higher strength and improved resistance to crevice corrosion chloride pitting compared to this improved corrosion resistance comes from the higher nickel and molybdenum content, and nitrogen strengthens the material. It is an excellent choice for stem material in 316 SS valves because of its higher strength. Desalination, food processing, chemical processing and even seawater services use super austenitic stainless steels as an economical selection in cases where high strength and good corrosion resistance are needed. Another popular super austenitic stainless steel is UNSN 08904-904L, which has a 5% molybdenum content. It is used for a variety of valve components for inorganic acid environments. It is also found in the pulp and paper manufacturing, pharmaceutical and power industries. The material is used mainly for trim components, but new specialized grades with higher strength are also being used for valve pressure containing components. When choosing materials of construction of valves, end users and engineering companies focus on materials resistant to corrosion or erosion. From a valve manufacturer's perspective, what are the other factors that must be considered? In applications using alloys, strength, toughness, resistance to galling and coefficient of thermal expansion are all factors a valve manufacturer must consider. End users may know what alloys work in their service conditions, but they must depend on valve manufacturers to evaluate these factors in the ultimate selection of the alloys for a valve. A common example is the use of SS316, which is compatible with a multitude of corrosive fluids, but may not have adequate strength for a stem, gate, disc or ball material, may not serve as a good bearing material, or may result in lockup because of thermal expansion rates as a ball in a metal seated ball valve applied in a temperature cyclic installation. End users often are concerned about proposed deviations to specifications for alloys in valves, and they should be. However, sometimes alternate materials must be proposed to ensure the valve functions as designed and is still compatible with the service fluid from a corrosion standpoint. End of Module Chapter 2 Materials and Trims